everybody. This is Steve Darcy from Go Engineer, and uh, today I've got a. Uh, I thought it was a pretty simple looking part, but uh, after looking at it a little bit crazier, I saw that uh, it has a little bit of an offset on the way that it is, and then not only that, but the back side is actually taller than the front side, so it's kind of angled as it goes up. So I thought this would be an interesting one to, of course, model up, and we're gonna model it up from scratch. So we're gonna start with a new uh, part millimeter template. Uh, we are gonna use some, some sheet metal parts, but in order to figure out the geometry, we're gonna start with something a little simple. So we're just gonna start with line command, kind of draw this guy up a little bit. See what that looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and put this guy on the origin. So we use midpoint. Uh, we'll go ahead and make both of these uh, legs, the one on the left and the right, the uh, same height. So make them equal. And then we'll go ahead and put some dimensions on this. So the overall bottom is uh, 16 inches. From top to bottom, it's 36. The overall top, where the feeder comes in, is 36 inches. Uh, from that edge to the center, it's 14 going to push it kind of offset a little bit there and then of course the height of these guys uh, are four inches so of course that was the easy part finish out of the sketch then what we got to do is come across uh, the nice thing is it is symmetric so I hold down control and just grab the front plane that will automatically put me into the uh, the uh, plane command and this guy is 60 inches away from the original uh, front plane so we'll go ahead and say okay. Uh, we'll do a new sketch on that front plane. We're gonna steal a lot of this geometry. So I'm just gonna right click on it, select chain, hold control, and I'm gonna deselect that top one. And then we'll say convert entities. That'll get everything. Except the height is different. It's only 28 inches tall. So I'm gonna drag the, uh, the origins of these guys down just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and dimension it. So I use my mouse gestures, pull off 28 inches. There we go. And then we'll just draw a line between the two. That looks good. That closes up the shape. And then we'll make that line horizontal. And that fully defines the sketch. So we'll finish out of the sketch. Hide my plane so nobody makes fun of me. And then I'm just going to do a loft. And I am going to do a solid loft. And I'm just going to go from one profile to the next. So you can kind of see what that's starting to look like. Pretty happy with that. But now is the tricky part. Uh, when I do the flanges off on the side, uh, they're gonna reverse around to the, the, the underside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch on this face, do a new sketch. I'm gonna offset that. Uh, the flanges are four, inch, four inches onto the outside. Um, and that's it. We'll go ahead and say okay. That creates our offset. And I'm just gonna extrude this up. And it really doesn't matter how far. So let's go two inches. Because what I'm really looking for is the faces of the part. So I'm coming from this guy and then also going to the face of this guy. Now the problem is I need to split this guy up. On the sheet metal toolbar, there's a thing called convert to sheet metal, which I can go from a solid to a sheet metal part. Uh, but I have to give it a little bit more uh, than what we have just here. So I need to split this up. So I'm going to do a new sketch. I'm going to split up uh, in two ways. So one, I'm gonna come off of this just a little bit and then out. I need to do the exact same thing on the other side. So come out and then out. Looks good. Uh, we can make both of this guy and this guy collinear. And we'll go ahead and put a dimension uh, for the length of that line there. And he doesn't have to be too big, but uh, just enough to kind of get in there. Now, if I want a gap uh, between these flanges, then I might want to also uh, add another line in there. All right, and we can go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a straight line segment right there. And I'll do one more right there. Now, of course I should do this on the other side, but just for the sake of time, we're just gonna do it with this one. Um, from here, I'm gonna go to insert uh, on my, my curves. I'm gonna do a split line. And I'm gonna select on this face and wherever these lines are, hit OK, 
you can see it breaks up this face to where I can select them separately. Okay, and this is going to be my gap in there. I'm going to just weld it up. I got some good welders. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now I'm ready to go ahead and convert this over to sheet metal. So let's say convert to sheet metal. I'll go ahead and select on this as my base uh, part. I want all of this to be quarter inch uh, thick sheet metal. If I zoom in there, you can kind of see what we're doing is we're offsetting to the outside, uh, which in this case, this is uh, fine. And then I'm, the bent edge is going to be this guy. And you'll kind of see what it's going to do. It's going to do a little crazy little curl up in there. And then we got our straight line segment there. Looks pretty good. Um, just for that curve, I may actually want just a little bit more. Um, but I want almost no gap. I'm going to bend it right on that line. So that looks pretty good. Um, I do want to keep the body. What that's going to do is keep the solid body out there so I can use it over and over again. All right. And with that part down, uh, we can go ahead and work on the other side here. And so I'm going to go to, again, convert to sheet metal. I'll go ahead and select on this face. And then the bent edge is going to be right there. It's going to follow that on up. Um, now, the problem right here is that when I rotate around, you'll notice that the gap in here, this might be my weld gap. But really what I want is this thing to the inside. If I say reverse the thickness, now it's putting it on the inside of that thing. Here you can kind of see what it's looking like there. Of course, then I need to grind down the edges and uh, put a weld bead in there, maybe on the inside and the out. But at least now it's going to fit up to the, the front side of that plate. Uh, I can't really do a collect bend on this because if I do, you'll notice now they're on the wrong height. So I'm going to have to put that guy on later. Let's go ahead and delete that out of there. We'll go ahead and say OK. And now we can go ahead and uh, I'm going to hide the main body there. So we'll just turn him off. And then what we can do is a uh, edge flange. So we'll select on that, and pull that off. Now I want it to go up to vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on this little point there. And it's going to stop there, but you'll notice the direction is not in the proper way. So we're going to go uh, to the angle right here. And instead of telling it an angle, I'm just going to select on that face. So that looks pretty good. Uh, it's going the wrong direction. So this is the good thing on the flange position. I get to tell what I want it to look like. That looks like it's going up to it. Um, and we're good to go. Uh, there is another option on parallel to base flange, so you may want to watch that one on where it's coming out to. Uh, normal in this case is correct. So I'll go ahead and say OK. That goes in and puts the bend in, and I've got my secondary sheet metal component there. So it looks pretty good. Uh, then I just need to finish up on the other side, uh, do my split line, and do it on the back side. So as I finish this up, um, I thought, you know what, I need to go ahead and put the little flange... Um, holes on the ends. And uh, there's kind of a tricky little way to do this. So I thought I'd share this as well. So I'm going to go back up to the uh, the original little boss extrude that I had. Let me go ahead and turn that guy back on. And uh, I want to use the inside of this guy. So we'll do a new sketch. And I'm going to go ahead and just do offset entities. And let's flip that. Uh, two and a half actually looks good. And then I need to split this up. Because I've got four individual parts, I'm going to have to use uh, four different um, pieces on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish out of the sketch. And then with this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch. And the only thing I want to steal is this guy right here. So I'm going to say convert entities. And that's it. I have to do each one of these as individual. So I'll finish out of that, do another new sketch, steal that, convert the entity, another new sketch. Oops, not edit. Sometimes I make mistakes. Uh, new sketch. Use that guy. Convert entities. Finish out of the sketch. New sketch. Last one. Convert entities. Exit out of the sketch. Okay. Now each of those individual sketches, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this guy. I'm going to play with each one of them individually. So we'll do a new sketch. Edit the sketch. Um, and then this guy, what we're going to do is there's a new command called segment. came out a couple years ago. Uh, if you don't have it on your command line, just look it up, and you can drag and drop it right onto your toolbar. So that's kind of what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and hit segment. 
And what it does is breaks this thing up into sketch segments, or it can put points out here on this. So I like that. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, just five right here. And then I want to go ahead and put a, uh, a point out here on the end. So I'll just add that. Finish out of the sketch. Um, then I need to use this sketch. So just for clarification, I'm going to hide these other ones. Go back all the way to the end of my part. Uh, actually, plus the flat pattern. Uh, hide my main part. I'll rotate this guy around. You can see I'm on the back side. Then what I'm going to do is uh, do a new uh, hole wizard on that. Regular hole. Let's use a, a one inch. And we'll position it at that point. There we go. And then with this sketch, I'm going to go ahead and pre-select that sketch. This one's 33. We'll go ahead and just do a uh, sketch-driven pattern. And we're going to use that hole. And anywhere there's a point, it's going to place that, that on there. And it looks like I forgot the, uh, the end of that guy. So let's edit the sketch. Put a point on the end. And finish out of the sketch. There we go. Looks good. Then I just need to turn that guy off. Go ahead and turn this one on. We'll play with him real quick. Uh, go ahead and do an edit sketch. Same thing. We'll just do the segment command. Uh, we'll break this guy up into, uh, I want a couple more on there. So seven. That looks good. And we'll go ahead and put the uh, hole wizard. Kind of same thing. Um, position it onto that point. Looks good. And then same thing. Uh, again, I'll pre-select the sketch. Go to Sketch Driven Pattern. Select on this feature. And because they're sheet metal parts, we have to do them all each individually. So that looks pretty good. And now that I'm done with all the uh, the holes, the last thing to do is uh, I need to go ahead and delete my uh, my original uh, chunk of metal out there. So right click on that guy. I can just do a delete keep body there and just delete it. Uh, make sure he's at the very end. So that way I've only got uh, the right amount of sheet metal. I've got four pieces in my cuts list and my cuts list is going to be correct. So hope you enjoyed that and keep modeling. This is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer. Thanks. Mm -hmm.